Hi, I'm Chris James, and you're watching A Healthy Alternative. Today, we're going to be discussing what's one very important thing you should consider before attempting your water fast. We're missing a piece of the puzzle. You start getting healthy, and you just become a better person. We need to start focusing more on the individual. All right, y'all. So before we get started, I have a huge announcement to make. My book, Metamorphosis, A Holistic Journey to Wellness, is available on Amazon in the Kindle store right now. The paperback is going to be available later on this week, but it's available uh, for pre-order in the Kindle store right now. So if you're listening to this video and it's Wednesday, it may be available in the paperback as well by then. It just needs to process. But I'm very excited to announce it is on pre-sale. So go get your pre-sale order to Day. Okay, so today I wanted to grab y'all's attention and I wanted to talk about what is one of the most impacting factors to your success using fasting as a lifestyle from this point forward. Let's say that you've never done any fasting or let's say that you've been fasting for a while but struggling. What is the one thing that you might be missing? And it's really, really simple. It boils down to the core reason why you're doing this fast in the first place. Why have you decided to adopt this lifestyle? Why are you using fasting, which is one of the most simple, but not necessarily easiest tools? Like, why are you doing this? Now, on the surface, that answer may be weight loss. It may be reversing a disease like diabetes. It may be, you know, mental clarity. I, I, I'm not sure. Everybody has something different. But what I can tell you is whatever your surface answer is or whatever your knee-jerk response is, it's probably not deep enough. It's probably not where it needs to be. Oftentimes, we don't take the time to dig deep enough into our reason why we're doing these things, which is what causes the problem when it comes to you know things getting tough and not being motivated. Um, oftentimes we fall victim to having to be motivated by someone else, whether it's someone like myself or your spouse or a friend or your children. These are all pitfalls almost for this wellness journey. And the reason I say that is not because they're not good reasons to want to do something is that those things are almost like a symptom versus the core issue, Right. And so I believe that when you're, when you're making this journey, you want to identify what is the core issue for, for your reasoning. Why are you doing this? And we used to say, you know, if your why doesn't make you cry, you need to find a new why. And really all that means is it needs to evoke some emotion when you're, when you're considering what is the real reason why you're doing this. Now, if let's say you're doing this because you want to lose weight. Well, if we delve a little deeper, we might find that you have self-esteem issues, or we might find that you have a poor relationship with food based on trauma you experienced when you were a child. You know, oftentimes we experience trauma as a child. We don't identify it as trauma if we remember it at all, and it affects us as we get older, you know, as we grow into young adults and then finally adults, and then having our own children. And the really messed up thing about it is, Oftentimes that trauma we experience, we subconsciously pass it on to our children in one way or the other. So this isn't necessarily going to be the easiest exercise to do. I've talked about this before, but figuring out what the real motivation for why you're doing this is super important. Now that's all really personal. So it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. Now I've mentioned before the heaven and hell exercise. I'll just briefly kind of outline it again. You get yourself a piece of paper. You draw a line down the center. On one side, you put heaven. On the other side, you put hell. And essentially what you're going to do on the hell side of the paper, you're going to be talking about all of the things about your current situation and your current level of health that you do not like. And also you're going to identify how if you don't make these changes, where you're going to end up. OK, so, you know, diabetes being one of the most popular diseases, I like picking on diabetes because a lot of us are dealing with it. And we all have seen our aunts, our uncles or someone in our family kind of deal with diabetes and maybe they're not here, here with us anymore or maybe they're struggling. And so we know what can happen when you don't deal with diabetes properly. So my, my grandfather, you know, had diabetes. He hated going to the hospital. 
I don't even think we knew he had that. I was, I was young at the time. I was maybe like, you know, 11 or 12. Uh, I don't think we really knew he had diabetes or anything was wrong. One day, I think my dad went to his house um, and his, you know, his dad, my grandfather had been complaining that his foot was hurting. And my dad went to his house and I guess my grandfather had been hiding his foot or whatever for quite some time. His foot, y'all, had literally just, just started to deteriorate. Like it was, you know what I mean? Like the circulation to his foot was so bad that it was pus and ooze and just stinking. And it was, it was dying. It was literally dying. And it was so bad and it gone so bad for so long, he didn't want to go to the hospital. So eventually, when we did get him to the hospital, he ended up having his leg amputated. Now, that was very bad for my grandfather because my grandfather was the type of dude that was always out and about walking around. You know what I mean? He knew everybody in the town. He was always out collecting cans and, uh, you know, turning cans in for a nickel a piece or whatever the case was. And so when he lost his mobility, it was like he started that process of dying, you know, and I saw, you know, his energy started getting low and he just seemed depressed and unhappy. And it wasn't soon, it wasn't too long after that, that he passed away. So that's, that's one of the most prominent experiences that I had with my, my, uh, with diabetes in my family. I've had several other siblings and, and other people in my family who have had or do have diabetes. And so I've seen what it does whether it's, you know, depression or thoughts of suicide or, you know, having legs amputated or whatever the case may be. So if you're dealing with diabetes, you draw on all of this, all of this pain, all the, all the emotion that's, that's kind of, you know, tangled up in this disease and you outline where you're going to end up. Be as real as, you're, real as you can with yourself if you do not make these changes, right? So that's the hell. And it gets much deeper than that, but that's just a, a you know outline. For the heaven, you get to have fun with this, right? This is the opportunity to really, the sky is the limit. Maybe even the sky is not the limit, right? Maybe you just go beyond the sky. How long do you want to live? What's the level of health that you want to have? How are you going to feel in your clothes, whether you're a woman, you know, that sexy dress, or whether you're a guy in that, you know, tight suit? You know, what are your energy levels going to be like? What's your interaction with your, your lover, your partner going to be like when you're healthy? You know, um, being able to see your children have children and have great grandchildren and all of the beautiful things that come along with having a long, healthy, vibrant life, being able to take trips with your family and, and really enjoy it and, and remember everything that's going on and, and be one of those people it's like, man, he's 90, but he like remembers everything. So that's the heaven side. Really have fun with it. And, and I would suggest doing the hell side of the exercise first, because what it's going to do is open up some wounds. And then you want to kind of, you know, dress it up, bandage it back up, and then put a nice little cherry on top and talk about all the good things that's going to happen when you make these changes. So that's a great exercise to do. I've talked about this before, but some people said I didn't hear it. So I just wanted to give like a brief outline of, of that exercise. I think it's very powerful and will benefit you greatly. Now, earlier today, I was talking to one of my clients about perspective. And I was talking about how I know you guys here at the beginning of my videos, one part I say, when you get healthier, you become a better person. And that that is, I, I don't think I spent enough time really explaining what that is. So when you're sick, okay, you don't think clearly when you have toxic thinking, you react to things differently than someone who does not have toxic thinking. What it means is you can, perception is reality, right? You could perceive someone saying something to you the wrong way. You could take it the wrong way and you could turn it into something that it wasn't meant to be all based on your perception. Now th that's okay. That's just communication. And, and, you know, that's just being a human, but what if your perception is being manipulated or what if you're being blinded by your own sickness? What if the chemical toxicity in your body is causing you to overreact and not think things through well? What if you have poor relations with people, not because you're just a bad person, but because you're, you're not well? And, you know, when I say sick, you know, I really just, I just mean 
not your optimal self kind of that's i mean uh, it's it's a very broad thing when i'm talking about sickness i know some people think oh you know you have to be diagnosed with something to be sick well i guess it just depends on your perspective but that's also something that's changed as i've gone through this journey right like my definition of what sickness is has changed and what it's allowed me to do is pay attention to the small nuances that typically would be lost in the sauce for example wrinkles if you get wrinkles and you're 35 going on 40 years old you're gonna be like nah, i'm getting old wrinkles no big deal it is what it is but now that i understand that wrinkles or the signs of old age are a actual disease then now i can see okay well, what am I, what am I eating? What am I not, what am I not drinking? What am I drinking too much of? What can I do to, to restore balance in my body? I'm looking at the signs of old age for what they are, which is a sickness. And so the whole idea of finding the fountain of youth and being a reverse disease and being able to look younger is really all about healing. And it all depends on what level of healing that you desire. And that's going to be where you get, right? So some people just want more energy. Well, more energy is pretty easy to do. You know, there's many different ways you could do it. Um, and if you start any of the things that we talk about on the Healthy Alternative, whether it's just drinking more water, you know, sun energizing your water, uh, doing light fasting, or just changing your diet, you're going to see more energy. That's, that's a pretty, you know, standard thing that people see. But if you start understanding that, oh, man, my my beard is starting to get a little gray. And you understand that that means something more than you just getting older, then you want to delve deep and you want to figure out what's going on with that. And I'm, I'm mentioning all of this because for me personally, this all plays into why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's not just simply, oh, I want to lose weight or, oh, you know, uh, I got this irritation in my urethra or, oh, you know, I don't want to get cancer and die. It's, it's like, well, shoot, how long can I keep my hair from going gray? Because the trend that we see is people are getting gray sooner. So if we can, if people can get gray sooner, can people get gray later? Can you indefinitely prolong, uh, you know, stave off the gray hair? Like, like what's the boundaries of all of this stuff, you know? And so I feel like if we understand the implications that being healthier, thinking healthier can have on our overall reality, then I feel like we could get so much benefit out of this process. And I want you all to consider that before you start fasting, or if you've been fasting, then I want you to take a step back, especially if you've been having issues with, you know, being consistent and all of that stuff. If the reason why you're not being consistent is because you don't have a good enough reason why you're doing this. That's why, like, for example, imagine, that you were stage four cancer, okay? Doesn't matter, pick your poison. Stage four, you're terminal. You've got two months left to live. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that there is one opportunity for you to turn your life around. And that, that opportunity is through fasting, drinking the right type of water in the right quantity. And when you do eat, you eat the right types of food, whole foods. Do you really think now, this is now, listen, when, when we're setting this, this story up, you got to understand, this is not a, I think this is going to work. This is not a, well, maybe it will work. This isn't a, oh, it worked for that guy, but it didn't work for this guy. So I don't know if it's going to work for me. You know, without a shadow of a doubt that if you do these three things, you will be able to save your life, right? So with that much pr pressure and that much importance on you doing the right thing, how easy do you think it will be to accomplish that goal? There's no doubt in your mind that if you do these three things consistently, you could literally save and prolong your life or reverse your disease indefinitely if you continue down this path. How long do you think you'd be able to maintain it? How easy do you think you'd make that decision? Now, if, you, if you're suicidal or if you don't want to live, that's a different story, right? But we're talking about somebody who they want to live. They have something to live for. And, and if you are in that, that frame, that, that mind state where you feel like you don't want to live or whatever the case may be, that is a, that's a difficult place to be because it's like you don't even have the motivation to, to, to shift that, that, that thinking. 
I would say just go through the motions. If you don't, if you're not even sure, you know, how you feel about still being here, just go through the motions. Try something, try something. Maybe it would seem extreme to you, but try something completely different. Don't give up on yourself. Just go through the motions. Go through the motions and see how it makes you feel. What do you got to lose? You literally have nothing to lose. You already feel like you're at the bottom of the pit. So just go through the motions and allow the journey to take you away. And I think that you will be surprised at what will come of it. And of course, having friends and family who care about you, you know, support you, that, that makes all the difference in the world. When I was researching, you know, cancer patients who, who were able to you know, reverse the disease or beat the disease, it was usually those who had something to live for. When you have something that a strong driving force, we're, we're capable of all sorts of things. One of the things I found amazing when I was a child, I would hear these stories about these mothers whose child would somehow get trapped under a car or whatever, or husband get trapped under a car. Somebody would get trapped under a car. And these women were able to lift the car up off of the individual and get them free, you know? And it's like, that, that should be impossible. But when, you're, when your back is against the wall and you have no other options, we somehow find a way to make the impossible possible because we live in a supernatural world and everything is within our realm of, realm of control if we believe it possible. And so that's the power of perspective. And that's why, you know, for the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about perspective, but also just building that, that really solid foundation for why you're doing things. Um, it can it can be so beneficial in the future, and uh, honestly, the the possibilities are endless. You know, for me personally, going down this path when I very first started this journey, this was 100% for me. I didn't feel good in my body. You know, uh, I, I was getting brain fog. I felt uncomfortable, irritated all the time, and I was very depressed. And actually, it's it's you know, I touch on it in the book a little bit. Um, you know, I, I had been in a relationship with this girl for, uh, on and off for like two years. Right. And there was a, there was a strong, uh, sense of love there between us, but we were both, I think, too immature to understand how to handle what it was that we were feeling. And so I don't think either one of us handled it well, but it left me in a deep depression that I could not seem to shake. And it was something that I was dealing with you know, for four years after we had broke up. And so for a span of time that I just, I don't even like talking about, I was depressed and I couldn't seem to build healthy relationships with new women. And um, it, it, it pretty much got, got me to a place where I'm like, yo, I'm I, like, I gotta make a change. And so I started this journey and just the genuine nature of the genesis of this journey led to now a healthy alternative being one of the fastest growing wellness brands that are out right now um, with us having you know hundreds of videos and tens of interviews with individuals just like yourself who sat there and was like maybe i could do that fasting thing maybe that fasting thing will work for me maybe changing my diet will work you know i used to be vegan or i used to do vegetarian but maybe eating natural foods or whole um you know high water content foods maybe that'll work for me and, and then you going from maybe that'll work to Chris, I did it. And then being able to share that on the, the platform, you know, it's been just an amazing ride. And so we've got a lot of things in the works. Uh, the book is just the, the beginning of the next level. I'm really, really excited for all the things to come. I, I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me. And I ask that you definitely go pre-order your book. Um, the actual paperback copy is going to be available, like I said, later on this week. But for those of you who are asking about the Kindle version or the ebook version, that is available on pre sale right now. We are going to be launching the book on 9 11. I thought it would be a day that we would never forget, but also by the same token, maybe take a negative stereotype of a day and turn it into a positive. Because Metamorphosis, A Journey to Holistic Wellness by Chris James, will be coming out September 11. 2020. Get your pre-orders today. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. I'll see you all next time.